Those who've been following the video games industry will know that game publishers will often give out these misleading statements about the way they intend to monetize their game. And that leads to a game being one way at launch, seemingly innocent, and then evolving into something much more egregious down the line. And I get the sense that this is exactly what will happen with this new mode that FIFA 20 is introducing called Volta. So as you can see in this trailer, it is basically FIFA Street. Now, I grew up playing FIFA Street. Hell, not just in video game format, but also I played actual street soccer, having lived in Venezuela. You know, street soccer was a huge part of my life, so I used to love playing FIFA Street back when, you know, EA wasn't super shitty. And it actually looks kind of cool, you know, in concept and all that, whether it's execution will be able to be nailed without egregious elements. Remains to be seen, though. But there's a bunch of stages here, a lot of customization elements, and yeah, it's just classic FIFA Street, which I think a lot of people will be happy to see. More details can be found in this article by website IGN. So it says, Volta, an amalgamation of the gone but not forgotten FIFA Street and the more recent soap opera-like offering of The Journey. So it's got a six hour long-ish story campaign, an online league system with promotion and relegation and standard kickoff modes. It's apparently been in development for two years, having been considered too big an undertaking for an annual cycle, and it hopes to bridge the hardcore FIFA audience alongside the casuals. That's what FIFA claims. And then it's got 3v3, 4v4, or 5v5 matches, which is par for the course for a street-style soccer experience. And finally, keeping up with appearances, so the cosmetic elements, that's described as a whole suite of vanity items ranging from branded sportswear to neon pink shorts are earnable through Volta Coins, the in-game currency you earn by playing matches and completing challenges. It cannot be purchased with real money. And then the article concluded with clothing can be applied to your whole team as well as your own created character, with these items regularly being updated as a live service in an attempt to keep you coming back to Volta to earn new wacky items and show off to others. So the cosmetic items aren't just going to be static, they're going to be continuously updated as a live service, which I think, you know, has certain implications, even though the VC, the Volta coins, can't be bought with real money, according to this particular article. But then, if we move on to this next article, the headline reads, FIFA Volta will have no microtransactions at launch. Here's a quote from FIFA producer Jeff Antwi. We are not planning on launching with any microtransactions. Right now, anything that you earn is earned through in-game challenges. You can unlock cosmetic items by completing objectives or by using Volta coins that can only be earned by completing matches. The higher the difficulty of the challenge match, the higher the rewards. The article continued, FIFA Volta will have seasonal content with challenges and cosmetics changing on quote, roughly a month to month basis, says Antwi. But for now, there is no season pass in sight. This makes sense considering how frequently content will change. And then the IGN article talks about how the lack of microtransactions seems like a smart choice. But the reason this is a smart choice is because it is my belief that EA is playing coy here. This is a bit of subterfuge they're engaging in by not launching with microtransactions and the wording here is very important because by saying that there won't be microtransactions at launch rather than saying there will never be microtransactions in FIFA Volta they're opening themselves up so that they can launch the game with Volta without the microtransactions and then over time add little monetization elements one at a time and make things more and more egregious after the reviews have come out, after people have bought the game and given their initial impressions. And if you look in the comments section, yeah, these sentiments are expressed pretty prominently. This one guy, this is the top comment of this article, will put them in after the game gets reviewed. I think that's a fair suspicion to have. We obviously don't know for sure, only time will tell. But given what we have seen before, not just from EA, but many other game publishers of similar stature as EA, 
this is, I think, a fair suspicion to have and something people should be on the lookout for, despite the PR talk saying no microtransactions. The keyword is at launch. That leaves things open. The developers or the publisher can say, oh, well, we just said at launch, we never said no microtransactions ever, when they eventually do add monetization. Now, the response that the editor at IGN provided was, quote, that is the challenge of reviewing a game that evolves so much over the year, every year. But even if this happens, I don't think microtransactions would hurt Volta because it's 100% cosmetics and doesn't affect gameplay at all. With all due respect to the editor here, I just cannot agree with anyone saying that cosmetics don't affect the gameplay experience. Sure, they don't give you a competitive edge, but cosmetics are often part of a game's reward system, the gameplay loop, and all of that is marred when microtransactions is introduced, when a game is designed to strong-arm people into making extra purchases. What they will essentially do is throttle the rewards, throttle progression, so that players who don't pay up have to experience an insufferable progression rate. And so that kind of forces them to pay up if they don't want to have a miserable time with a title. I know not everyone cares about cosmetics, but plenty of people do. Plenty of people get satisfaction out of seeing their characters customized and look badass and express themselves in the way the player intended. And that's something that game companies often exploit. Moving on, I'd like to highlight some of the BS that companies like EA, among others, have engaged in, further proving that they indeed cannot be trusted when they say stuff like FIFA Volta will have no microtransactions at launch. So EA has obviously talked about how they've learned from Star Wars Battlefront 2's mistakes and the loot box controversy, vowing to do better, except with FIFA Ultimate Team, they have not improved one iota. In fact, things have gotten worse on that front. It's more pay to win than ever. It is just uh, more gambling than ever. And they've just come up with the uh, worst defenses, talking about, you know, sense of pride and accomplishment. That's a very infamous defense. And then there's surprise mechanics saying that loot boxes are ethical, fun, all of these different things that made people just roll their eyes hard. EA has talked about how loot boxes, it's all about choice, fairness, value, and fun, which is something that everyone who's experienced loot boxes will scoff at, or at least most people. There is Activision, Black Ops 4. Recall that it began fairly innocently before the monetization slowly but surely began to move more towards pay to win as actual weapons began to be added to loot box pools. And as the battle pass just started getting worse and worse uh, in terms of the progression aspect. Crash Team Racing. So this game was advertised by Activision that it would not have microtransactions. So it reads in this article, despite featuring online content and DLC plans for the future, all of Nitro Field is microtransactions free. In a sit-down presentation and hands-on during E3 2019, a member of the Nitro Field team stated that the entire game would avoid microtransactions, instead offering new content for free during the game's life cycle. This was back in June. 2019 before this game launched and then lo and behold Activision decided to add real money microtransactions. So we're not just talking about deceitful language and cleverly worded things that allow publishers to add microtransactions despite using the term no microtransactions by adding things like at launch. We're also flat out talking about straight up deception, where they say no microtransactions and then they add them anyway. And then there is, of course, Fallout 76, where Pete Hines on multiple occasions expressed that, quote, atoms are used in our shop to buy cosmetic things. So, you know, new outfits or skins or things like that, things to customize your character to look unique from everyone else. In another occasion, he said, the Atomic Shop is cosmetic stuff to make sure folks understand, look, there is a line. There are people who have crossed it, but we are going to stay on the right side of it in terms of things you can spend money on and how this stuff works and what you're getting for your $60. Uh-huh. Stay on the right side of the line, huh? Because, well, 
We just started to get gameplay affecting microtransactions despite these promises. So repair kits is a big one. Same thing goes for scrap kits. And while they're not strictly pay to win, they are pay for convenience. They do affect gameplay. And Bethesda had promised no gameplay affecting microtransactions. Bethesda's response to this was just super dismissive of their previous promises. Here is what one of the developers said. We believe the repair kits were a convenience item for people who didn't want to grind for adhesive and other things, and it was just a way for them to basically shortcut game systems, definitely not pay to win. Well, we have learned from that Jernstrom fellow who did the whaling keynote that convenience items are the most lucrative in terms of the monetization elements that we see in games today. Convenience is what generates the most money because they're subtle. They're sort of low key, but still compelling enough because it essentially forces people to pay to fix a problem that's purposely added to a game or purposely being kept in a game. In this case, the convenience of being able to repair a weapon on the fly or scrap weapons and send them back to base on the fly via repair kits and scrap kits respectively. Yes, you're not going to win at the game through these items, but your life is going to be a lot easier with them because the game purposely makes your life hard by not just patching this stuff for free. By essentially allowing inherent gameplay flaws to exist so that players can pay for the solution. And I'll say again, there is the promise that it would be cosmetic only before that word was just broken. Before what Bethesda said back then became completely moot. And that, I believe, is something that will happen with FIFA Volta. It is just conjecture, obviously, but I have been through this cycle enough times with these games that this is not a crazy assumption to assume that the term at launch was specifically chosen to open FIFA up for further monetization beyond the stuff that's already there, stuff like FIFA Ultimate Team, among other things, the gambling, that's already there, and then now with the addition of FIFA Volta, with FIFA Street, this mode that actually could be real compelling, a genuine good addition to a stagnating franchise, yeah, I think it can be ruined. I think EA will push monetization slowly but surely, inchworm their way towards more egregious stuff, and maybe it'll happen slowly over the course of months, or hell, maybe over the course of a couple games, but by saying we're not planning on launching with any microtransactions. Yeah, that, that's just not good enough for me. If you remove launching from this sentence, if you just say we're not doing any microtransactions ever, then I'll hold you to that. But the second you add at launch, yeah, you've lost me. I already know what that means. I already know that the possibility is open, that EA will push monetization and we have seen in the past time and again how whenever a game publisher of EA size whenever EA especially gets a chance they will absolutely push monetization to the furthest extent possible as subtly and as sneakily as possible now by some miracle maybe it won't turn out to be the case maybe they'll truly keep Volta microtransactions free but I would at the very least urge you to be cautious if you are planning to get FIFA 20 just for Volta, be aware of EA's history, be aware of the language here, be aware of the specific words that they chose at launch, launching right now, no microtransactions. But who knows what will happen in the future. Anyway, there you have it, folks. This is my take on the FIFA Volta promise here. I have my suspicions. Let me know in the comments below what your take is on this whole matter. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.